Hi, my name is Dana. I'm the editor-in-chief of the teen-led Just Allergy Things magazine. The other team members and I at the Just Allergy Things magazine decided to start our podcast to spread food allergy education to a greater audience. With this podcast, we aim to share our experience with food allergies and give advice, comfort, and support to those who have food allergies or to those who want to learn more about the cause. We also hope to shed light on the invisible impacts of living with food allergies and expose them to the non-allergic population. So, whether you have food allergies or not, we hope that you join us on our journey of spreading food allergy awareness. Hi everyone, in this episode I chat with Melody about everything anaphylaxis. Throughout the episode, you hear about Melody's first-hand experiences with anaphylaxis. We cover everything from what anaphylactic shock feels like to the recovery process after it occurs. The episode especially emphasizes the physical and emotional components that occur before, during, and after anaphylaxis. We also talk about what it's like when receiving an auto-injector shock. So, without further ado, I hope you enjoy the episode. Hi, my name is Dana. I'm 16 years old. I'm from Florida, and I'm allergic to peanuts, tree nuts, sesame seeds, fish, and quite a few other things. Hi, I'm Melody. I'm 17, and I'm from California. I'm allergic to dairy, shellfish, wheat, gluten, and about four other things. Um, Before we get into this episode... I want to put a disclaimer out here. This episode will be talking about um, allergic reactions and the toll that it can take on you both emotionally and physically. So if you're not in the right place to listen to this episode, please pause it here and come back when you are. And if you are a small child or are listening with a small child, please be warned that it does go into some details about allergic reactions. Melody, have you ever experienced anaphylaxis? Yes, I have. uh, I've had four pretty severe anaphylactic reactions, three of which landed me in the hospital. The fourth was pretty easily stopped with Benadryl. One was when I was six months old. I had, um, sorry, no, I was a year and a half. Um, I had three drops of milk fall onto my foot. I puffed up, it had gotten in my mouth as well, and it had sent me to the ER. That was the very first time that I had an allergic reaction and how we figured out that I was allergic to dairy. The next time I was, I think I was eight and I had eaten shellfish at somebody's house and I did not know that I was allergic to shellfish. So I had an allergic reaction there. Um, Flash forward about 10 years and I had a allergic reaction on Father's Day of this year, which is 2021, and that is the one that I will be going off of talking about today. So what does anaphylaxis feel like? Anaphylaxis can feel different for a lot of people. A lot of people um, have uh, gastrointestinal issues. Um, Other people, it feels like you're dying. You're you're coughing, you, you feel like your lungs are about to collapse and your heart is going a mile a minute trying to pump blood to your body when you're not breathing well at all. And it does feel like you're dying. And it is a terrifying thing that people have to endure. Wow, so every time after you've experienced anaphylaxis, have you gone straight to the ER? Yes you should always go straight to the AR. There is um, always a chance that an EpiPen is not, a single EpiPen is not going to work. And there is also, there is a chance that it will come back. So you have to go to the hospital to be monitored and um, to make sure that if it does happen again, it can be caught immediately. So how long typically do you stay at the hospital after your initial anaphylactic reaction? It's about anywhere from two and a half to four hours. That's the amount of time that it can take. It also can take longer for your body to go into what is called a phantom reaction. Um, And something that they will do at the hospital is before they discharge you, they will give you um, steroids. When I had my allergic reaction last month, 
I, they gave me um, two different types of steroids on top of Benadryl. And I had to take all three of those twice a day for three and a half days. And the reason for that being when you have an allergic reaction and you use epinephrine, it doesn't immediately flush that thing out of your system. So, and it does take three days for it to be completely flushed out of your system. So the steroids will help block um, your body from realizing that it is still in your body. And that is a preventative for having these phantom reactions. Um, when you have anaphylaxis and you inject the auto injector, does it hurt a lot or just all you can think about is relieving your anaphylaxis? All you can think about is relieving your anaphylaxis. Sure, you might feel a pinch, but you really don't feel any form of pain because you are, you, you are too busy trying to keep yourself alive yeah. <laughs> to feel it. Yeah, that's something I've always wondered. So it's good to be cleared up. So going back to what you said about the second anaphylactic uh, reaction after your initial one, how often did you get that? Did you get that all four times you experienced anaphylaxis or, or less? Was it only like one time? So I have never had a phantom reaction. Um, I've always been very lucky. And when I do have allergic reactions, I get there in time and they're able to get steroids into me and Benadryl into me um, and things that will stop it. And um, they monitor me very closely. And those things that they're doing is keeping my body from having another reaction. I've been very lucky in that case. So going back to your most recent anaphylactic reaction, can you describe um, what happened that day and how things played out? Yeah. So what happened that day, um, my, I, I'm a big coffee person. I love coffee. And my coffee got switched with somebody else's hot chocolate at the coffee shop. And this coffee shop is so good with food allergies. But on that day, I guess somebody just grabbed the wrong one and I grabbed the wrong one. Um, and I got home and I was eating breakfast with my family because it was Father's Day. I take one sip and I realize there's something off. Being allergic to dairy my whole life, I have never had real milk and I have never had real chocolate. So, or milk chocolate. So I don't know what those things taste like. Um, about five seconds later after swallowing that hot chocolate my throat starts to itch and it's not just a dull itching it's a oh my god my throat itches so badly I could feel my chest getting super heavy and I'm realizing that oh shoot this is dairy so I thank god I had an EpiPen sitting on my kitchen table so I grabbed it and I used it on myself. And that is the first and only time that I have ever had to use it on myself. And for anyone listening who knows, who has had to use an EpiPen on themselves, you know how terrifying that is. You know how to use an EpiPen. We've all been trained and bred from a very young age to use an EpiPen. But it's not until you have to use it on yourself do you really understand how real this situation is so I grabbed it and I jabbed it into my thigh I might have gone a little too hard <laughs> um, and I held it there I, I, I used the AviQ so they're the ones that um, talk to you and it counted down from five and I left it in for an extra five seconds to make sure that every drop of epinephrine got into my body before I took it out. That was basically the rundown of what happened. So before you put in the AviQ into your thigh, did you tell your parents what was going on or you just did it immediately? Yes, my family, from the moment I said, my throat is itching and not like it usually itches after I eat something that I'm kind of sensitive to. Right. They realized that, oh, wow, some, something got messed up. They were very worried, um, which I don't blame them. I was 
worried too, but for parents of people with allergies who are listening, freaking out and causing a big scene does not help your child. And I'm very lucky that my family does not freak out like that. But to parents who are listening and your child is having allergic reaction, don't freak out. Because if you freak out, your child is going to freak out. Um, and the freaking out on the person having the reactions part, that just makes your heart beat faster. And it just makes breathing more difficult. If you're already struggling to breathe and you're having major anxiety on top of it, it can make your breathing even worse. So the calmer you stay, the better when it comes to allergic reactions. So for you personally, how long did it take for the epinephrine to start working and for you to start seeing that things were starting to get a little bit better? Immediately. Um, epinephrine okay. works pretty immediately. Um, I'd say maybe about three seconds after I took it out. Okay. Uh, it, it's pretty immediate. You start feeling better. Um, a side effect of epinephrine is you are shaky and your heart is going a mile a minute. And by a mile a minute, when I was in the ER, I was looking at the heart monitor. My heart was about 175 to 185 miles wow. or, uh, beats per minute, which is for anyone that knows that is an extremely high heart rate. Um, and that's mm -hmm. another thing. That's another thing why you should go to the ER because sometimes epinephrine, since it makes your heart beat so fast, it can cause issues there. That's never happened to me or anyone that I know, but it can cause issues with your heart because it makes it beat so fast. Because what epinephrine is, epinephrine is basically, it, it's a form of adrenaline. It's an adrenaline shot um, that wakes your body up and kicks it and kickstarts it again. So because it is a type of adrenaline shot, that's why it makes it beat so quickly. Yeah. So after you administered the AVQ on yourself, um, what happened after that? Did you call 911 or did you did your parents drive you to the ER or what happened? My dad drove me to the ER. Um, because of COVID times here in California, we are still only allowed one person per minor. Um, so my dad drove me. We uh, sat in the ER for two and a half hours. Nurses were coming in and checking on me, asking me how I'm feeling, um, asking me if I'm having any itching or residual, residual coughing, um, wheezing. Um, I was very shaky because um, ep epinephrine on top of being very severely, uh, very, I had very severe anxiety. Right. I, I hate hospitals. Um, for anyone that knows me knows that I despise hospitals. I am so afraid of them. So being in a hospital setting did not help <laughs> that. So I was very, very shaky. Yeah. So um, other than experiencing anaphylaxis, your fear for hospitals, does it, um, have you ever gone other than when you experienced anaphylaxis? Yes, um, back in March of 2021, I had um, emergency surgery. Oh. I had, yeah, I had really severe appendicitis that caused a lot of issues. Um, my fear of hospitals, it stems from my food allergies, but it also stems from that. I had a like, don't get me wrong, everyone in that hospital was so nice, but being in a traumatic situation makes it so that the hospital is not my favorite place. Yeah, I totally understand that. So for me as well, having severe food allergies, I often get extremely anxious, like whenever I try food and maybe I'm like sensitive to it and I get like a stomach ache or something. And occasionally, not very often, I'm pretty sure it's my head, but I experience like trouble breathing, but I'm pretty sure that stems from like panic attacks from like being fearful of like, I guess, anaphylaxis and more severe allergic reactions. So has that ever happened to you where you get like 
anxious with food allergies and like you feel like you have symptoms of anaphylaxis because I feel like that might happen to people. Oh yeah, that's something that happens quite a bit. If I'm eating at a new restaurant and I eat something, um, sometimes my head will think, oh my God, this is new, what's happening? Um, For anything that's new, for people with food allergies, that can be very, very stressful. And it can get to the point where, yeah, you do work yourself into, oh my God, I'm having an allergic reaction, but you just kind of, but you're not, it, it's all in your head and you just kind of have to talk yourself down. Right. Uh, and that's, that's hard to do for a lot of people. Um, it's not easy <laughs> um, talking yourself down, but I'd say I experienced that a lot as well. Yeah, so, but there is a stark difference between when it's your head and you're getting like really anxious than real anaphylaxis, you could definitely feel that. You can definitely feel the difference. Okay, cool. That's good. What's the most, um, I know that people experience anaphylaxis when they're out and they're eating um, unknown foods. Like what's the most stressful situation you've experienced anaphylaxis in? Um, I have never really had an allergic reaction, a severe allergic reaction um, outside of my house or a friend's house. Anaphylaxis and any anaphylaxis, anaphylactic reaction, no matter where it is, is extremely, extremely stressful. Um, but I do, I will say I have seen people have allergic reactions outside and at um, restaurants and such. And I would say that is very scary from watching it from somebody who knows what it's like perspective because there's people all around that don't know what they're doing and don't know what's happening. Eating out in a restaurant is the most stressful place, I would say, to have an allergic reaction outside of an airplane. Right. Definitely. So I'm pretty sure for you, it was from a really young age since you experienced anaphylaxis so young, but when did you start really understanding the severity of your food allergies and anaphylaxis? I started really understanding at around age eight. I was very young. Um, People with food allergies in general, they have to grow up faster. They have to really be on what they eat and what they're about to eat and on friends and extended family members about this this is what I can and I cannot eat and a lot of families raise their kid to be to know these things at a very young age I started um, participating in a group um, out of Canada at age eight. And that's when I started to really kind of get that there's a lot of different parts and there's a lot of different places to having anaphylaxis. Yeah, I, that's really funny because I actually started really understanding my food allergies when I was also eight after my dad told me that after you eat something, or not after you eat something, after you touch something you're allergic to, you can't touch your like eyes, mouth, face. Um, and I don't know why, but that really just got to me. And like my food allergy anxiety just like rocketed from there. So it's really interesting that it was from the same age. So Melody, what's the recovery process after you experience anaphylaxis? So after my allergic reaction, I took to the internet to try and see what other people had said about recovering from anaphylaxis because it had been 10 years and I found nothing. (laughs) I found physical, like what to do during a allergic reaction, but I found nothing on the aftermath of it. And I found that really interesting. The recovery process for everyone, again, is going to be very different. But the way that I recovered, and I'm still not fully recovered, it's been maybe a little over a month now, and I'm still not fully recovered. 
the recovery process has been long. <laughs> um, so when I had, when I, where the area that I had stabbed myself with the EpiPen, um, because I had went, because I had stabbed myself so hard, I had a really big bruise around that area. And I hated seeing that. It caused a lot of anxiety seeing that. So something that I did to help with the mental, my mental health, because the bruise didn't go away for about three and a half weeks afterwards. Um, something that I did to help myself with that is I bought, <laughs> this is gonna sound really, really childish, but I bought super colorful and Disney band-aids <laughs> and I just put them right over that bruise so that when I did have to look at it, I was looking at something colorful and something happy and something that brings me a lot of joy. I am somebody that really likes bright colors and I'm somebody who absolutely loves Disney. <laughs> so I, so that was something that I did that really helped because I wasn't looking at it and thinking about what happened to me. I was looking at it and it made me smile because it was a pretty color or it reminded me of one of my favorite Disney movies or a time or watching a favorite Disney movie with a family member or a friend. Um, so my mind didn't go to what happened to me that day. It went to something, it acknowledged it, but it went to something that was a lot better. And that's something that has really helped me is I, I actually still keep a Band-Aid over that area. The reaction is still very real and it's gonna feel real for as long as it takes you. Um, after you have a reaction, there's no set recovery time. It's however long it takes you to feel better and to feel more comfortable to do things again. I pushed myself after my allergic reaction. I pushed myself to go back out there and uh, go back to my job, um, go up back to hanging out with friends because I wanted to feel normal. Now that I look back and think about it, that probably wasn't the greatest thing to do. I probably should have stayed at home for a couple of days and did things for myself instead of go, 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 go. I must work. I have to do this or I have to go out or I have to keep my mind off of it by going out and doing something. Keeping your mind off of an allergic reaction, especially if it causes you a lot of anxiety, that's something that is really, really good. You can watch movies. You can listen to music you can read, you can play games. There's plenty you can do at home instead of pushing yourself to go out and do things. And I'm using air quotes, be normal because going, pushing yourself is, it puts a lot of stress on an already stressed out body. I was on a lot of steroids. <laughs> um, I had to, I was actually about a day and a half after my allergic reaction, I was on a plane to Oregon to visit my sister. And I was on a lot of steroids. And Benadryl, if you've ever taken Benadryl, you know that Benadryl is something that wipes you out. Oh my gosh, I, yes. <laughs> I have no energy after I take Benadryl. So imagine taking the Benadryl on top of two other steroids. I was a human zombie <laughs> for a couple of days. I wish I could have stayed at home, but I had a wonderful time with my sister. Spending time with my sister was a massive help in recovering because she knew what had happened and all the food that I ate with her, I watched her make and I watched the people I was staying with, I watched them make the food. And that was super, super helpful. Um, Another thing in recovery, because I know that it's not easy to eat after you have an allergic reaction, even if you know the product and 
you have read it over a million times and you've eaten it a million times and you have like five bags of it in your house that, that you've been eating out of, you don't want to eat. Yeah. And I know this isn't the case for everyone, but it is the case for certain people. I know that it is just, it's stressful to eat. So something that you can do is you can really, you can make food yourself and uh, you can make food yourself and, or you can watch your family members with a, like a Hawkeye, you can watch your family members make the food, but don't allow, don't allow yourself to not eat. Because if you don't eat, a lot of bad things can happen if you don't eat. So try, I know it's hard, but try to eat just a little bit and work yourself back up to eating what you'd usually eat. And yeah. that's what I did. I worked myself back up. I ate a little bit and then I ate a little bit more at another meal and then I ate a little bit more and that really helps. Yeah, for me too, after I've had an allergic reaction, which a severe one hasn't happened in quite a few years, but I always get like sensitive to food and like my stomach hurts, so I feel nauseous. After I would say serious allergic reaction, um, I am always like fearful of eating or even mostly going out and like, because I know, like you said, it feels so real after it happens, like what's preventing this from happening again, but that's just something, a mindset that you ha- want to try to avoid, because if you keep thinking that, then you're not going to really live and like experience life to the, the fullest, really. So after you have an allergic reaction and you feel scared, just like Melody, start start with small steps and work yourself, w- work your way up, um, because if not, you'll be missing out. So Melody, um, what mental toll does anaphylaxis usually take on you? Anaphylaxis, the mental toll that an anaphylactic allergic reaction varies on the severity of it. I know people who have PTSD. That's how bad that it can be. Anaphylaxis can cause PTSD in many people. It can cause panic attacks. It can cause um, high amounts of anxiety. I like to call an anaphylactic reaction, it's a mental scar. A severe anaphylactic allergic reaction is a mental scar on you and you carry that with you everywhere you go. And you carry that stress of, oh my goodness, is it going to happen again with you? And for a lot of people with anaphylaxis, it always feels like there's a cloud of you might die over your head. But if you have anaphylaxis and you live with that cloud, like I do, you just kind of have to learn to ignore it. Yes, there is a very, like, because of our allergies, there is a possibility that you could have a very bad allergic reaction. But if you do the steps and you catch the reaction early and you do what you know you have to do to keep yourself safe, people with anaphylaxis can live whole happy, healthy lives, maybe with some toll, but with the right people. And if you have the right support system, there is nothing a person with anaphylaxis cannot do that a normal person usually can. Yeah. And I say normal person, meaning non-allergic person. There, there is nothing that we cannot do. We just cannot eat certain foods and we cannot be around and we cannot touch or prepare certain foods but in the real world there is really not much that non-allergic people have on people who are allergic to something we just can't eat certain things but we can still do jobs I work in a zoo I work in a zoo around food every day but I know that I have to be careful and I wipe my hands and I wipe things that I touch down and I avoid the food that is around. So if you do the steps that you know that keep yourself safe, the possibility of a severe allergic reaction decreases. And that's something that if you keep on that, that anxiety, 
eventually, it might take a long time, but eventually that anxiety is going to start to get better and not worse. Yeah, definitely. Do you have any advice for people who are experiencing symptoms of anaphylaxis? I'm going to basically reiterate what I'm going to say is stay calm. When you're having an allergic reaction, the more you stay calm, the more everyone around you is going to stay calm. And the more everyone around you stays calm, the more calm you are. And another really big one is just be gentle with yourself. After, after an allergic reaction, be gentle with yourself. Don't push it. Don't say, don't let your mind make you think that because this happened to you, you're not okay or you're not good or there was something more that you could have done to prevent it there's in most cases there was nothing left to be done your mind is going to play tricks on you and it's going to say oh you could have done x y and z don't listen to it because if you were careful and let's say if you're eating at a restaurant if you were careful and it is the kitchen's fault and you had and you spoke to a manager or you spoke to a waiter and you made it very clear and it's still the kitchen's fault There was nothing you could have done about that. It's not your fault. So keep that in mind and just take time and just be gentle with yourself. That's great advice. Um, So Melody, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you want to support Just Allergy Things mission in promoting food allergy awareness, you can follow us at Just Allergy Things on Instagram. And make sure to check out the Just Allergy Things magazine on justallergythings.com. Thank you again for listening, and until next time, bye!